Hi, so welcome to the last set of lectures uh, for ULI 101. We're going to be talking about two more tools, uh, SED and AUK. And I think you're going to find a lot of things that you like about these tools as long as you put some practice time in and get comfortable with them. Uh, the first one we're talking about is SED, which is a stream editor. And what that basically means is that we're going to be working with a file. Uh, the file we're working with is cars, you know, hopefully with the getting familiar with this file and what it looks like will make uh, what we do a little bit more um, easy to understand. Um, so it's a stream editor. We're going to be working with the file. Uh, we're going to be creating modifications to that file and we're going to be outputting the edited contents of that file to the display. What that means is we're not changing the file itself by default. Uh, you can do that, uh, but that's an option that you'll have to explore for yourself looking in the man pages. Um, really it's just safer for us to be working with um, output to the display. So you're going to see what I mean in a second. Okay, so to get started what I'm going to do is uh, open two little panels over here. I'm going to uh, open up my standard area over here. Uh, I'm going to use cat-n cars and this is what we get back. This is something you've seen before, uh, hopefully. So just get that a little bit bigger over here. Uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to be in the same location. Beef that up a little bit. Okay. So so to start off with, I'm going to point out that with uh, SED, with the stream editor that we're working with today, um, I'm going to show you, you four commands that it can do. Um, there's more. <laughs> there's a lot more. There's a lot more depth in each of these uh, tools, as you will see, um, particularly AUK whenever I've looked into it. Um, it's a veritable programming language unto itself, um, so there's always more to learn. Uh, but let's go ahead. So we're going to use said. We're going to be putting things into single quotes. And I'm going to be pointing it at this uh, cars file. So we have four tools. Uh, the first tool we're working with is print. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be doing something like this. I'm just going to be giving it three and six and then P. So hopefully you recognize P as being P for print. Um, the line numbers though. Well, I just gave it away. They're, they're line numbers. Um, so this is the output we get back. You will notice uh, that what we've done is that we have printed some of these lines uh, twice. And if you look into it, the lines that we have printed twice are the lines 3, 2, 6. Uh, not lines 3 and 6, lines 3, 2, 6. So this is defining a range. Uh, that's important because it's a common mistake that students make. So what's really going on here? Um, you can think about the logic of said as being something like print the line and do something. Okay, so when we're looking at this, what we're telling it to do is uh, for each line of the file, print the file and for lines three, two, six, print the line. So this is why you're getting uh, a copy of every single line. And then every once in a while, set is performing an additional print. Um, so we don't have to do it like that. What we can actually do is feed set an extra option. Um, the dash N here. So you've seen a lot of dash n used for suppressing new lines or like uh, printing line numbers, like uh, especially over here. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be asking said to not print each line by default. Okay, so every line here, lines one through thirteen or whatever, we're going to choose not to print those by default. So this is what we get back. So if you compare the two versions over here, you're going to see, let me bump that up a little bit. How about that? So now they're roughly the same size. 
So what you're seeing now is that we've got line three here, four, five, and six. And we're not printing lines one through 13, okay? Uh, so the first thing that you can see that we can do with said is choose which lines we want to be printing. Um, pretty cool. Okay, so with me so far, the first tool that we can use with said is a print. We can choose to print a selection of lines and um, keep in mind it's a range of lines not you know picking and choosing lines three and six and five and eight and whatever okay so let's move on to the next tool the next uh, the next tool that we can use with this is a delete okay so let me just uh, start up I'm just gonna be using this so once again, I'm using single quotes to isolate this. And um, I'm choosing what you probably guess is going to be line 5. And I'm going to be using, using D for delete. So let's have a look at what we do. Uh, what you'll notice is, yeah, line 5 is missing, right? So deleting line 5 is going to do exactly what you, what you expect it to do. Um, and again, what we can do is feed this a range okay so you can read this as uh, for each line in cars print the line but for lines five two eight delete those so what we've done here is uh, we've deleted a range from lines 5 to line 8. So when we go through we see line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, and then we get to RAV4 which is line 9, line 10, line 11. Okay? So what we've essentially done is cut the middle out of this file. Okay, so tool number 3 is quitting and so this makes maybe like less sense when you're just looking at it for the first time uh, but it's actually really simple so we're gonna use said we're gonna use line 5 again and uh, this time we're using Q for quit so what you'll notice is that we're getting line 1 2 3 4 and Ford LTD that's line 5 and we don't print anything past line 5. What we are telling said to do is for every line in cars, print the line, but after line 5, quit, which means stop printing. Okay? Um, so this is kind of repeating the same functionality as what you might get in head, right? With head, you might tell it, you know, just print the first five lines at the top of a file. Um, this is essentially doing the same thing. Print all these lines and then stop printing after a certain number of lines. Alright, so before we move on to the fourth and final tool that we're going to be teaching you in ULI 101, um, start talking about regular expressions. Uh, we were not finished with regular expressions, uh, so if you thought you could, you know, kind of squeeze by without really diving into them, sorry. Uh, we're going to ask you to be using regular expressions with these tools too, which actually makes them really, really useful. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here, again, I have my single quotes where I'm going to be feeding said a certain instruction, something that we want to be doing or accomplishing. Um, this time I'm going to be feeding it Chevy and you'll notice with these tools that we're covering this week said in awk um, when we're feeding it a regular expression we're going to be putting the regular expression between these slashes here okay and I think what I'm going to be doing uh, I'm just going to go back to using that uh, print tool and notice also I am asking it not to print each line by default. So what are we doing? Instead of giving said a range of line numbers, we're giving it a regular expression. 
and we're telling it to print. Okay, so take a moment and just think about what you expect to see from this command, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, so I don't know if this is the output you expected to see, but here's what's going on. We're getting back Chevy Nova, Chevy Impala, Chevy Volt. Go over here, we got Chevy Nova, Chevy Impala, Chevy Volt. Okay, what we're doing, instead of choosing a range of line numbers, we're choosing um, a regular expression. This is kind of working like a, another tool that we just finished working with, grep, right? This looks like a grep command. We're returning a number of lines that contain this regular expression. So the one thing you don't see here is line number six, right? With the uh, uppercase C Chevy. Um, this is not ignoring case. We're not going to ask you to remember this for any exam, uh, but you might be interested. So if you are interested, the way to ignore case is to be using an uppercase I over here with said. Okay, once we do this, we're getting back that uppercase letter. Or, since you guys are pros at uh, regular expressions and stuff like this, now what you could do is just, uh, you know, something like that, and we'll get back the same thing. Okay, so let's see how regular expressions work with some other tools that we've been talking about. Let's go back to uh, using delete. So I'm going to use said, I'm going to use single quotes over here. What I'm going to do is maybe feed it. Uh, let's use a different regular expression just so that we can go back and remember how they work. I think I'll do F or V for this one, right? Okay. Again, keep in mind if you're, get it, if you're giving it a regular expression, uh, put it between these slashes. And we're going to use D for delete. And let's go over here. So, if you remember correctly, uh, this is anchoring our regular expression at the beginning of the line. We're choosing either an F or a V, and we really don't care about whatever comes after this as long as this is matched. And uh, for each of these lines, we're asking said to print the line, but if we match this regular expression, delete that line from the output. So what you'll notice is any line that begins with an F or a V is not printed. It's basically deleted from our output. Okay, one more example before we move on to our fourth tool. I'm going to be using Q with this. So this is going to quit and hopefully you are pretty much getting what this is going to do now. Um, let's uh, enter a regular expression like this, yeah? I'm going to use 09, 09, 09, and let's do a dollar sign. Um, actually, I'm going to do... No, that should do it. Right, so, if you remember correctly from quizzes and stuff like that, we've got this regular expression. We are matching with a space. Then we're matching with three digits. We're anchoring this to the end of the line. Um, what this is going to be matching is a three digit number uh, for the very last column. So you'll notice we've got one of those right over here. And once we have matched this pattern, we're going to ask said to quit. So Take a moment to think about what you expect to see from this. Okay, time's up, let's go. So as you can see, as soon as we match our pattern, our three digit number at the very end of the line, uh, we quit, we exit, we stop printing and the rest of the file is ignored. Okay, so we've covered regular expressions with the three tools that I've shown you. Uh, I promised you a fourth tool. This fourth tool is a substitute. Um, and this is where a lot, uh, this is probably like the thing that I've personally used said for 80% of the time, if not 90% of the time. Um, 
because you know I prefer using grep or head or things like that um, because it, I'm just a little bit more used to them uh, but this is one t this is one sort of uh, function that uh, you can't easily do with other tools so we tend to use it a lot more this is a substitute um, the syntax is going to look a little bit different from what you expect so we're going to start with this we're going to be using three quotes and we're going to start with an S so the S is a substitute notice we're not putting it at the end here like all of the other ones that you were expecting no we're not doing that so we've got these um, three slashes and that basically creates two fields and you can think about it like this we're going to be searching for a pattern the old pattern over here and we're going to be replacing it with a new pattern okay so it's very much like a replace tool in your text editor that you're familiar with um, so let's do something like um, well let's say that uh, Ford has been bought out by a new company like uh, Mercedes. All right, let's try that. Okay, so we've got to go back to all of our old stock and we've got to rename all these old Ford cars into Mercedes cars. I don't know, maybe that's not the... Or is it Volkswagen? I don't remember. Volkswagen. Sure, why not? Okay, let's go ahead. So you'll notice I uh, kind of messed up my formatting here with using a very long name, but we've taken each of the Fords and we've replaced the word Ford with the word Volkswagen. Um, this works with something else. Let's go ahead and change every zero into an asterisk. Okay. So this is our old pattern. This is our new pattern. Let's take a look. Now, this is something you may not um, have expected. Um, what we've done is for each line, we are asking said to replace a zero with an asterisk. And it's done that, but it's only done it once on each line. As soon as the substitute has been completed, it stops the substitution and moves on to the next line. I mean, it, it finished finished printing this line but uh, it didn't finish doing all the replacements this is the default behavior for the substitute tool with said um, we can override that with another option let me show you that so we've got this and the only thing I'm going to do over here is give it a G at the very end so the G stands for global and global means that we want to perform the substitution everywhere in the, the file basically okay so we don't want to stop after the first substitution we want to continue performing the substitution uh, until we get to the very end of the line for each line until we get to the end of the file okay so this is what we get when we do the global substitution okay every zero now has been replaced with an asterisk so that about covers it for our said tool and like I say there's a lot more uh, that you can be doing with it um, the next thing I want to talk about is using a similar function uh, in Vim okay so I think what I'm gonna try to do here here is uh, let's get Vim cars okay so I'm gonna open up the same file in Vim and uh, we have the same thing that we can do and uh, the uh, the way that we write this is very 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 similar uh, there's really only one difference so I'm gonna hit colon here to enter command mode you can see at the very bottom um, what we had before was old slash new and maybe G to make it global let's just assume that we want to do it global yeah um, the only thing that I'm gonna do that's different here is I'm gonna be entering uh, this percent sign okay so what I'm gonna choose to replace uh, what I'm gonna do is maybe change Chevy to uh, Chrysler 
or something like that. Um, and actually, I'm going to add one more. This is just um, a little bit of safety. Um, with the C, I'm going to ask Vim to ask me for confirmation for each of these replacements. Um, what I've noticed is the first time I try to do this, I usually don't get it right. Um, so it's always good to get a little bit of extra feedback as you're doing these. Okay, so let's go ahead. It asks me, replace with Chrysler. I'm going to say yeah. Replace it with Chrysler. This one I'm going to say no. Um, so the fact that it asks me for confirmation there is because I added the C to this. Um, so this isn't really going to come up in quizzes and things like that, uh, but I feel like you should probably uh, write it down and have it handy the next time you have to work with Vim and it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Okay, so that's going to be about it uh, for the first lecture. Let me bring over my uh, notes here. Um, so I talked a little bit about substitutions in Vim. Now over here is a much more advanced kind of um, example. This is the idea of uh, being able to use the substitution tool in Vim to replace all blink tags with maybe something else like a, I don't know, emphasis or bold or something like that. So it goes into much more detail. It goes into um, much more uh, functionality. We talk about back referencing and things like that. This is not something that you need to remember for the exam. Uh, but if you are bored and you're looking for extra things to learn, um, I would go through this example and try to understand how it works. And you'll find that it comes in very handy using any text editor, any modern IDE or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, good luck.